Whoa, this was a rough one. Uh, I started off with a mayday for a man overboard, um, which I had tried to assist on as much as I could. Uh, and then after that, the weather just deteriorated and deteriorated. It got ropey. Um, but what can you do? So yeah, it ended up all right. We were on a hunt for a pub and spoiler alert, we found one. Um, so yeah, it wasn't all that bad. Let's roll the intro and get myself off the dock. standard departure it's a little bit windy uh, the wind is coming off my starboard bow so my main concern is my bow getting blown around um, to port and hitting the very nice gentleman's boat next to me um, so what I've done is set up a trip line which you can just see onto that spring line and I've got the tiller all the way over and the engines ticking over and ahead and that's what's pinning me to the dock and allowing me to take my time getting all the other lines off um, and that will be the one remaining line sort of thing uh, using lovely DCW's amazing quick release knot which I think I've already shown you or he showed, he showed you guys in uh, the video that I did with him uh, the boat yoda video which was an exceptional day out for me. Uh, this is where I just sort of right double check is everything going to do what I think it's going to do. And then a final idiot check. Is everything turned on? Is everything doing what I want it to? Do I know what I'm about to do? Yeah I think so, right. So what I'm doing here is bringing the stern out a little bit and pushing the bow in slightly to give me a bit more room on the bow. Uh, and then the quick release is coming off and we're giving her a little bit of gas in a stern to get some movement going um, before too much prop walk kicks in, uh, turn it off otherwise uh, my concern is that the end of that pontoon will scrape down the boat, uh, which it didn't. You can see the fenders didn't move there. Yeah wasn't three bad. So prop walk now is taking me over to the left of your screen. Um, it wasn't too traumatic. <laughs> no. See you later, thanks for all your help. So instead of trying to fight him, yeah, instead of trying to fight it and make the boat do something that it doesn't want to do, I'm just going to let the prop walk take uh, the stern around to where it wants to go, which is putting the stern into the wind, uh, and then when I think I've got the space, swinging her around. However, I didn't quite have the space. Um, just in front of me you can see the other pontoons there, so that's now the danger zone, because those boats are in front of me and that's the way the wind's going. So don't want to get too close so I sort of I see that I might be too close for comfort so I just go astern stop the uh, stop the forward motion but it still continues the turn um, because the prop walk is working in the direction I want to go the rest of the forward movement and then going back spin her around and away we go that is that so the the wind is now behind me and that's that we'll just fly on out of there Um, unfortunately the motor yacht that's at anchor over there uh, has just put in a mayday. They've had somebody go overboard um, at midnight last night who apparently wasn't a strong swimmer. 
Um, I'm in the area, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a run through this um, uh, mooring field, which is downwind of where the vessel is, um, just on the off chance that the chap's on a boat or something like that and trying to get people's attention. Um, uh, there's something in the way. Hopefully he's all right. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to take a run through this uh, mooring field, uh, have a look at the coastline down there uh, and see if I can see anything. Uh, that's where the wind's been all night, so uh, I'll just see if, hang around and see if we can offer any assistance. I doubt very much I can. I imagine the Coast Guard is on the way out, but just in case, I'll, uh, I'll take a run along. Uh, yeah, I'll do. Um, so I've, I've been through all the, uh, the mooring field uh, and done a run along the shore as close as I can. Uh, I've spoken to some guys from the crew from the boat uh, in their rib, uh, in their tender, sorry, uh, and they're, they're, um, they're continuing the search. The lifeboat is now on station um, and two sorry, three police boats have turned up as well uh, from the uh, Navy base area uh, to assist. Um, I'm going to call up on 6-7 uh, and just see if they want me to hang around or not. Um, I doubt there's very much I can do. They have several several ribs in the area now. Um, yeah, we'll see. All right, I'm... Uh just leaving the area, there's nothing more I can do. There's seven or eight high speed vessels with highly trained people on there. Um, and as bad as it sounds, after eight hours, apparently the chap wasn't a very strong swimmer. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be looking for waving arms or something. Um, it's unfortunate to say. Um, so, my, my area of visibility in this choppy horrible weather uh, is a few meters either side of my boat so uh, I'm still keeping a lookout just in case but uh, they've got the tidal areas and stuff and it looks like they're all looking further up so they've worked it out on the tide possibilities um, right anyway yeah so I've got 20 knots on the nose as always uh, this horrible little two meter chop um, which is actually worse in terms of getting anywhere than um, like to say two meter no I meant like about a half a meter chop every two seconds um, which is worse for getting anywhere than actual decent swell because I'm doing 2.7 knots motoring into it um, trying to cut across that way to try and get in the lee of the islands a little bit um, but yeah here's what it is um, what the hell have I got to complain about uh, right I'll just plow into this for a little while and then we'll uh, we'll see what's happening This is what you call one of those deteriorating situations. We're getting absolutely mullered. I've just got the main up, but honestly, it's brutal. I just had to try and re rig the thing. I'll tell you about that later. This is utterly disgusting. Can't get the 
leech of the mint, stop luffing. Ah, uh, this is shite. It must be 30 knots. Being absolutely soaked. We'll see what happens. I might be turning around. This is now double the forecasted wind speed of 14 knots. And absolutely grim. What I'm doing is trying to get over to this other side now. I'm just nowhere near where I want to go particularly. But hopefully if I can get over to that side and get some protection, at least the sea state will be a bit better. Uh, and I might get some protection from the wind. Um, if not, if it doesn't get any better, I can always go up that little doodad there and anchor. <coughs> but I want to be going down there. Saying that, it's dying off a little bit. Don't jinx it. Something's wrong with the mast, with the uh, with the main. I need to do some work to it, but I can't stand up at the minute. So, see what happens. All right, I've made my turn now. Um, it's even worse. <laughs> the waves are just vertical. Uh, they're not big, there's, there's nothing to them, they're about a metre, a metre and a half. It's just that they're absolutely vertical. So when they come through, the boat can't recover at all. It's just like this. Uh, yeah, the wind's atrocious and exactly where I want to go. Coming from exactly where I want to go, as always. Uh, but yeah, I've uh, come across made the turn safe. Um, oh, there's no point trying to show you, it's a lot of rubbish. This is awful, I'll see you when I see you. Several hours of absolute hell since we last spoke. Uh, I'm completely drowned. The boat's completely drowned because I got the four peak hatch cover caught in the hatch when I dogged it down this morning. I thought it was dogged down, it wasn't. So basically, about four cubic meters of water have been coming in through the four peak. Everything's pissed, went through and destroyed. But that is what it is. I've tried absolutely everything. Uh, I've had the head so out, I can't get anywhere near close enough to the wind, it just flogs. Um, so I'm just stuck at motor sailing. <coughs> I've kept trying to cut across to this side over here um, to try and get a bit of the lee of the island, but it makes absolutely no difference to the uh, sea state. Um, the waves aren't big. It's not that the big waves, it's just the vertical and the one after the other. Uh, every now and again, you just get a big one and, and it just stops the boat dead. But I'm actually speeding up a little bit. I'm doing four knots now instead of two, which is good. Um, I'm probably going to get there 
around dark. Um, mind you, once I get round the corner, I was going to go through the Kyles of Butte, um, but I don't fancy the other side of it in this weather. Um, I'd rather stay into the open openness rather than down a narrow channel. I've got salt water in my hair, nowhere to have a shower for a week. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I'm a bit happy now that I'm seeing a bit quicker speeds. I've just saw 4.7, uh, so that's useful. Uh, like I say, once I've round the corner, I'll be downwind um, and it'll be a completely different day. It'll feel completely different despite it being exactly the same amount of wind and everything else. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I don't actually find it uncomfortable as such when I'm sat here. Uh, when I try moving around, I find it difficult. But if I'm just sat here, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, yeah, I'll just plod on. Um, I spoke to Alistair this morning. Uh, we're meeting at the start of the crew and we're going to go through together. Um, oh, they the big ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then they stop us down, we're down to two knots, you see. That's the trouble. Uh, and then it takes a while for the momentum to build up and then it gets stopped dead again. But yeah, it's, um, it is what it is. Black car now that I pointed the camera out. As soon as I point the camera out there, not a single wave. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to meet Alistair and Edita. Um, get through the canal. Hopefully the anchorage will be alright. There's a few blows coming through now over the next week. There's a 40 knot one on Tuesday. So I want to be inside the Caledonia Canal before that, ideally. Um, but we'll see. I'm not putting myself at risk going out in stuff I shouldn't be going out at. And I have a tidal gate in the Sound of Ling. Um, so I can't. I want to set off from Crinan an hour before low water open, uh, which is about 11 a.m. on Sunday. So I've not got a fuck me. I've not got a full day sailing Sunday. So we'll see what happens. Right, I can't be bothered with this stuff. I'll see you in a bit. It actually got alright for a bit, but now it's back to shit again. Uh, this is the headland I need to get around because the wind's coming from there. I need to go right off it because uh, I'll be on a lee shore with nowhere to go if something goes wrong. However, I am being chased by somewhere a big. the French one uh, training ship cool as hell I'll get some better footage when I actually go past it when it comes past me it's several hours later um, my friend Alistair is tied up on a pontoon there Alistair and Adita so uh, he's just messing me to say tie up behind them so that'll be nice instead of anchoring um, we've got about three hours left uh, I've managed to get closer over to this side now so the sea state is it's night and day it's, it's hell of a lot better um, <coughs> got an angle on the wind the winds died down but it still picks up in big gusts occasionally so I only want to put the amount of sail out for the gusts rather than um, rather than the current wind so 
still motor motor sailing at five five odd knots uh, had dolphins for the past half hour um, that was good yeah beautiful part of the world it's a little bit foggy and misty and where I'm going up there is very uh, looks very inclement uh, I just messaged Alistair to see if it was raining he said it's spitting on and off so it's not too bad um, yeah it's been an absolute grim day I was talking to Dan earlier who I got the boat off uh, he messaged me saying how's the sail going it's beautiful around there I'm like I hate it <laughs> I hate sailing, I've had enough. Uh, but it'll be one of those type 2 fun things where all will be well once I get uh, get tied up. I don't know if there's a pub there, but man, I could murder a pint. I hope there's a pub there. We'll see, see what happens. Uh, right, I'll probably check in when I'm on the approach unless anything else uh, happens. Um, that French uh, ship that I've seen a couple of times now, they were over in... Belfast when I was leaving Bangor they were the ones that were following behind me and then they overtook me just there which was um, pretty cool uh, they were maybe 50 or 60 meters away uh, huge ship uh, beautiful um, yeah excited to have seen the submarine the other day but yeah get into the canal get through I'm, I'm, I'm on a massive time scale now I'm, I'm just bolting through everywhere, so uh, you're just going to have to put up with the bad weather, aren't you? And put up with the bad days when you need to move, so it is where it is. Right, catch you in a bit. It has gone from brutal bedlam to benign um, and utterly stunning. I don't know how much it'll come across on the uh, camera, but simply gorgeous uh, I've got two and a half hours to go I've put some more heads out but there's no wind now so it's not really doing anything um, I've just brought it out to level with the spreaders so it's at about 100% of the J distance from the fourth day to the mast if you're interested uh, I think that actually with where it fills up to is probably in line with where my second reef is um, but hey ho whatever uh, yeah dolphins were good got little swimmy swimmy birds uh, should get there before sunset which will be a bonus uh, I think I mentioned that I'm tying up on a pontoon behind Alistair and Adita It'll be the first time that anybody will ever have caught some lines for me, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that'll be nice. I won't know what to ask them to do, because I'm only used to doing it on my own. <laughs> uh, right, oh. There goes the phone. Kel surprise! Right. Now I'm enjoying it. Now it's worth it. should just get a motorboat <laughs> these sails these flappy things honestly they're a nightmare there's loads of string on them and everything cool little uh, lighthouse doodad thing probably has a name most things do quite a few um, pot boys pot markers to watch out for um, that's a good thing about having a partially filled headsail is that you can actually see underneath it which is nice when it's all the way out it's right down at deck level and you've got to clamber over the side to sort of look around uh, but I can just duck down and look out of it uh, just had a tin of soup if you're interested Heinz Big Soup chicken and vegetable cold out, straight out of tin none of this warming up malarkey uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit or something. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be attached. Oh. Yeah, the others are all right. This one's come out. 
Okie bloody dokie. Uh, just coming round the port lateral marker and the starboard one is just over there, recommended track 315, which I'm about to turn on to. And then you can see the harbour wally doodad thingy there. Head over yonder, throw a line to Alistair, maybe have a pint. That's entirely possible. Uh, I might just run to the pub and let Alistair tie the boat up. <laughs> Here, sort that out, I'm going for a beer.
And that's that. Once again, uh, I need to thank Alistair and Adita for the amazing footage. Um, this is the first time I've seen them since Padstow, which is brilliant. And I've spent uh, a few weeks together, which was absolutely superb, having people along for the ride and stuff like that. Uh, and Alistair's very experienced, so it's good to be able to pick his brains as well. Um, yeah, it's, it was excellent. So, coming up next week, we'll be going through the Crinning Canal. It will probably be a two-parter. Um, and I'm going to sort of set it up as evergreen content, is what Matt keeps telling me to do. Um, so it won't be um, set as an episode in this episodic type of thing that I'm doing. It will be like sort of standalone videos, then pe other people from the outside can come in and watch it and not feel like they're missing out on everything else. So, yeah, two standalone videos of that, most likely. Uh, that's going to take a lot of editing because Alistair is fantastic with his drone and his phone and everything. He's sent me loads and loads of uh, footage, which is fantastic. So, yeah, that's that. Unfortunately, um, I can't remember if I said in the video, but the the gentleman who went overboard, I don't believe made it. Um, they called off the search after a few hours, uh, or they ended the search after a few hours, um, which implies that he was found. Uh, yeah, but I could only hear one side of the conversation, so I don't know. But I haven't been able to find any information, but I believe, sadly, he uh, he lost his life. So, yeah, it wasn't not a great way to start the day. Um, but it sort of reminds you of the fragility of things and the, uh, the danger of the sea, really, doesn't it? Um, and also that nobody wants to go to work and not come home. Uh, but, yeah. On a very sad note, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll see you next week. <laughs>